all Johnny knows about Edward Roberts is that he was a docker from Liverpool. He's come to the docks with a copy of his great-grandfather's birth certificate to try and find out more. Name and surname of father, Isaac Roberts. So that would have been my great-great-grandfather. The name of mother, X, the mark of Annie Roberts. Why is there an X there? Is that meant to be a signature? In the occupation of Isaac, he was a dock labourer. So, Edward grew up to be just like his dad. John has arranged to meet historian Sally Sheard in Bootle, close to where Isaac and Edward once lived. Sally has found documents relating to when Johnny's great-great-grandfather Isaac and his son Edward lived on Haddock Street. This is from 1911, census. So this would have been when Edward was one years old. Yeah. Head of the family, Isaac Roberts, and that will be Anne, his wife. Yeah. Total children born alive, eight. So they had eight children. Yeah. Oh, wow. They had four that died. Yeah. Within two years, by 1913, another of their children had died. So they lost, oh, wow. they lost five out of their eight children. So this is one of your great-grandfather's brothers. This was George Roberts. This is a death certificate. 13 months old. Yeah. Cause of death, diarrhea and teething. Seven weeks, so they died from... Yeah. Just... It's crazy to think that in, the, in, uh, in Liverpool, Kids are dying of diarrhea and teething issues. Yeah. You don't and really think about it. You don't really associate that with no. this country. You know, yeah. something so almost normal. George died in September, and we know that in the, the summer months, in the hot months, there would have been lots of flies around, and that, that's the sort of thing that would have probably caused outbreaks of infantile diarrhea can also see from here that they were a poor family because it says X, the mark of Annie Roberts' mother. So she can't write, she's, she's illiterate. Johnny's great-grandfather, Edward Roberts, five brothers and sisters, all died from diseases linked to poverty and still fatal in Britain at the turn of the 20th century, like gastroenteritis, typhoid, tuberculosis and bronchitis. Why is it that they're getting all of these diseases? It comes down to wealth, Johnny. Yeah. It's that inequality, it's the poverty of this family. Well, this was a really poor part of Liverpool. It's known as Brutal Bootle. Really? And there's no, there's no national health service. I can't imagine going through that, what that must have been like for them as parents to see five of their eight children die. Your great-granddad was one of the lucky ones. Yeah. So I've got a bit of better news for you now. Oh, this is the marriage certificate for my great-grandparents, Edward and Mary. Yeah, that's right. So when was this? This was 1932. He would have been 22. Yeah, he's 22. And she's 21. She's 21. He's marrying Mary Catherine Murphy. And if you look here, it's got Edward's occupation. Doc labourer. Doc labourer already. Yeah. Her father was a dock labourer as well. Can you see what it says underneath each of those names? Oh, is, this, is that deceased? Yeah. It's both Edward and Mary, aged 22 and 21. They both lost their fathers when fathers, they got married. Yeah. That's crazy. That's, that's really... That's not something you'd associate with being 20. No. I have got one final thing. OK. So this is a death certificate yeah. of Isaac, aged 50. And what did he die from? 
accident. What is that? Can you read that? I can't. I don't know what that is. Okay, that says anthrax. Anthrax accidentally contracted while working a, on board a ship. John has come to the Liverpool School of Tropical Medicine to meet medical doctor Nick Beeching. The school was founded in 1898 to help understand diseases entering Liverpool through the docks. Now, I don't really know much about anthrax. Obviously, I've heard of it, mm. but I only really think about it in the kind of TV where they use it as like biological warfare. Well, you're absolutely right. It has been used as a, a, as a terror weapon and has been used in recent times. So before the Second World War, uh, various countries, including Britain, I'm afraid to say, were weaponizing it because it's a disease of animals as well as people. Uh, and there were plans at one stage to drop uh, infected cattle cake over Germany. Really? Unfortunately, they never used it, but they did test it on an island off Scotland called Grunard Island. In 1942, top-secret military trials tested the impact of an anthrax powder bomb on captive sheep. Anthrax is a disease that affects livestock, like sheep and cattle. It can be passed on to humans in the form of spores, which live in infected hides, wool, meat and bones. If it's scratched into the skin, it causes skin disease. If you inhale it, it causes lung disease. And if you swallow it, it causes gut disease. This is a report from the newspaper um, around the time of your great-great-grandfather's inquest. A verdict of death from anthrax was returned at the inquest of Liverpool yesterday on Isaac Richard Roberts. His widow said he did not complain of being ill until a week ago when he showed her a pimple under the, under the chin. It was stated that Roberts had worked from February 21st to the 24th on board a vessel which had come from South America. So how would it have been having anthrax? What would have happened to him? Well, I've got a picture of a patient very similar to what would have been happened to your great-great-grandfather. You know, it starts a little pimple, nothing different from any other pimple, but then after a couple of days, it starts to feel unwell and get uh, a big blister, because this bug produces lots of poisons that cause a lot of swelling. Mm. Um, and together with that, he would have had the blood poisoning as well. So it would have progressed from that little pimple over a week or so up to this sort of thing. He would have been sent to Fazakerley Hospital. That was the big isolation hospital for Liverpool. And that's where they specialised in looking after infectious diseases, uh, including anthrax. Also, it was actually quite manageable. This was in the days before we had any antibiotics, but they had some treatments at about the time he had it, and that pushed the death rate down to about 10% or less. So if the death percentage was so low, how was it that Isaac, my great-great-grandfather, managed to be one of those unlucky ones? This is a report of all the admissions to Fazakerley Hospital over five years with anthrax. Your great your grandfather is here, number 27. 50, male, dock labourer, days in on admission, seven. So he would have felt ill for a week yeah. before. Which is a lot more. It's the most on this list. Everyone's come in two, three, four days feeling the symptoms, but he'd lasted seven, which... I guess shows how tough he would have been. Moribund on admission, what's, what's that? Moribund is a rather old fashioned way of saying almost dead. Really? It means you're really flat and, and pretty near the end. He obviously tried to stick it out for as long as he could. You could, you could speculate that if he went in earlier like these other people, that the outcome might have been better. It just raises more questions. It does, yes. Well, why did he not go to hospital? Well, he was a docker, and if you don't work, you don't get paid. So he would have probably wanted to do everything possible to keep out of hospital. That's crazy. 